Hi, this is Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware. We have a special treat for you today. A new processor and desktop platform launch from the company affectionately known as Chipzilla. Now, if you've been following our coverage of Intel's new processor microarchitecture, codenamed Nahalem, you'll know that today marks the day of the core i7 processor from Intel. This means new chipsets, new motherboards, a new LGA1366 processor socket, and a host of other new technologies to go with the platform. We've got Velocity Micro's core i7 system here on the test bench, as well as a few different core i7 motherboards. We're going to take you for a spin around Intel's new core i7 processor. Processor. Let's have some fun and take a look. As we mentioned earlier, Intel's Core i7 processor architecture is a new design virtually from the ground up and there are several new key features, including the chip's integrated memory controller, where historically the memory controller resided in the chipset on the motherboard. This new integrated memory controller is a triple channel controller offering three times the memory bandwidth of the previous dual channel controller at DDR3 1066 memory speeds. Probably the most significant upgrade to Intel's Core i7 processor is the new Quick Path Interconnect, which replaces Intel's aging front side bus that exists on previous generation Intel processors. This new 20 lane bi directional serial link provides communication to Intel's I.O. hub and then fans out to PCI Express. In the future, QPI will provide another link pair between multiple processors and high performance Intel Core i7 systems as well. In addition, the new Core i7 brings back Intel's hyper-threading technology, which provides two logical threads per processor core and up to eight threads of available processing resources in a quad-core processor. Now you can bet with all this new Intel processor and platform technology coming to market that OEMs and ODMs have been chomping at the bit to get their systems ready for this launch. In-house we have Velocity Micro's Edge Z55 system that we'll be looking at in detail on HotHardware.com in the coming weeks. This system is built on an Intel Core i7-920 processor. Let's take a quick look. Housed in Velocity Micro's pure aluminum signature GX2-W chassis is an Intel Core i7-920 quad-core processor with a stock speed of 2.66 GHz. But Velocity Micro ships it overclocked from the factory at 2.93 GHz. The motherboard used is an Intel X58 chipset-based Intel DX58SO motherboard. And of course, because we have triple channel DDR3 system memory technology with the Core i7, we have a 6 gig Corsair triple channel memory kit installed. Three 2 gig DIMMs are installed in this system. And as you can see, the system comes configured with a pair of AMD ATI Radeon 4850 graphics cards in crossfire mode. We should also note that with the X58 chipset for the Core i7, Certain motherboard manufacturers will be able to support NVIDIA's multi-GPU SLI technology, but it is dependent on the motherboard manufacturer and the motherboard BIOS to support it. Shifting gears quickly to components, one of the first motherboards we received in our labs is the MSI Eclipse Core i7 motherboard, which is also built on the Intel X58 Express chipset with ICH10 Southbridge. This motherboard is outfitted with a multitude of I.O. options, including eight USB 2.0 ports, a pair of gigabit Ethernet LAN ports, dual eSATA ports, and a Firewire port on its I.O. plate. The MSI Eclipse comes equipped with some pretty serious all-copper heat sinks on its chipset and power array. In addition, it's also outfitted with six DDR3 DIMM slots for a total of up to 24 gigs of DDR3 system memory. In addition, this board supports NVIDIA dual GPU SLI configurations as well as dual AMD Crossfire configurations. The MSI Eclipse Plus version of the motherboard supports three-way SLI. Next, let's take a look at the Core i7 in action. We've got Intel's DX58SO motherboard on a test bench. Let's fire it up and take a look at the system BIOS. The Core i7 processor is built on a significantly different architecture versus Intel's previous generation Core 2 processor. Here you can see a Core i7-965 Extreme processor clocked at 3.2 GHz and a 132 MHz bus frequency. This is actually a little bit misleading. It's not actually a bus per se, but more of a reference clock to drive other clocks in the system like the memory speed. Here you can see the QPI data rate or quick path interconnect 
clocked at 6.4 giga transfers per second and our 8 meg of L3 cache and 256k of L2 cache. Now we're sure you're wondering what overclocking is like with the new Core i7 processor, and it certainly is different versus the Core 2 processor from Intel's previous generation. Here you can see our host clock frequency of 133 MHz can be adjusted up very much like we bumped the front side bus speed on a Core 2 processor. Only with the Core i7, we're also affecting this quick path interconnect data rate speed as well as the core clock of the processor and memory speeds, all with this one reference clock. You can also adjust the processor's multiplier. Only with the Core i7, the processor has four individual ratios for each of the four cores in the CPU, and you can adjust one, two, three, or all four of them individually. Next, we'll fire up a couple of quick benchmarks, and this is one of our favorites. It's a multi-threaded 3D rendering benchmark called Cinebench 10. As you can see, we're fully taxing our eight logical cores, or four physical cores, with hyper-threading in this benchmark at 100% CPU utilization. The processor is taking eight slices of this image and processing it simultaneously. And as you can see, we're rounding up at just about 55, 56 seconds to process this test. And we'll come up with a score of right around 15,850 on this benchmark. And actually, if you compare that to a previous generation Core 2 QX 9770 processor from Intel, also at 3.2 gigahertz, we score about 12,500. So that's a nice performance boost. Let's take a look at some overclocking next. Now, as you can see, we're overclocking our Core i7 Extreme 965 processor to a core speed of 4.150 gigahertz with a multiplier of 25x and that reference bus speed of 166 megahertz. As you can see, all eight of our logical cores are maxed out at 100% CPU utilization, and we're ripping through this test significantly faster than the stock speed test of 3.2 gigahertz on the processor. We're going to come in at about 11 seconds faster than the stock speed run with a score of 19,410. And that's pretty impressive overclocking results with the Core i7. Now we expect the new Intel Core i7 processor to be shipping to retail sometime later this month. We hope you've enjoyed this quick take overview of the processor and some of the platform technologies that go with it. But make sure you stop by our site for the full performance evaluation, technical deep dive, pricing and other details because this simple quick video certainly can't do justice for all the new technology that Intel is bringing to market. I'm Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware. Thanks for stopping by.